Okay, guys, so we've already established that BGP is a TCP-based application, right? Which means that it's going to depend and it's going to start out with, a, with the same old three-way handshake that we've seen in TCP hundreds of times, right? Now, remember that in TCP, we're going to have the active passive, right? So we have one side, let me just finish writing passive here. So we have one side that's going to that's gonna use the higher random port, so higher random, and then we're going to have the passive side that's going to use the application specific port, right? So in this case, we're going to that, that application specific port is going to be 179. Now, for the most part, people typically don't control this. I mean, people just go in and we say router BGP and we turn it on. But what if there is an instance where you want to control who is the active speaker? So I want to say, hey, I always want R1 to form an adjacency. I always want R1 to be the active side of the TCP handshake. I always want him to initiate the TCP handshake over to R3. I don't ever want R3 to initiate it the other way around. Is there a way that we can do that? And the answer is, of course, there is. So let's go ahead and let's actually set up BGP between R1 and 3, and then we'll take a look at doing that. So uh, I should have a route, show IP route, right? Show IP route static. I should have a route to my loopback address because what we're going to do is we're going to appear with a loopback address between R1 and 3. So let's just say ping 3.3.3 .3 .3 and we'll say source loopback 0. Good to go. Config T, router BGP, we'll say 13 for the ASN between R, uh, R1 and 3. So let me just note it down here. So the ASN we're going to be using is 13 on both ends. This way we don't forget. And BGP router ID, you guys know that I always like to set my router ID. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say neighbor 3.3.3, and we'll say remote AS13, neighbor 3.3.3. I'm just trying to get the initial uh, the initial BGP configuration up and running here. I'll show you how to do the active passive control in, in just a second. So router BGP13, BGP router ID 3.3.3, neighbor 1.1.1, remote AS13, and we'll say update source. Oh, forgot an address there. Forgot a uh, digit. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So now we have an adjacency that's up and running. But but how do we know? How do we know who the active is? Well, we could say show TCP brief, and then we could use the all switch here, and that would let us know. So you know, here we can see that router three in this case was using 179. So what was R3? R3 was the passive, and R1 was the active. How do we know that? Because R1 had the active, or R1 has the higher random port. I could also say show IP BGP neighbors, and then I could say include host, and that would give me essentially the same information. If I go here and I say clear IP BGP star, and I kick BGP in the head, okay, BGP should reset. We should see that. We should see the neighborship come up. Let's take a look at our TCP connections again. And this time, who has the higher random port? Router 3. Router 3 is talking at 49,092, and R1 is the passive listener. He's the 179. So now we have, we're, we're in the situation where we get an exam bullet point that says, hey, you know, I, I, this particular router, R1, should always be the one who forms the adjacency. Show IP BGP neighbors, once again, we can say include host, and we see that R3 was the active speaker. So there are two ways that we can do this. Either we can set one router to be the passive, or we can set the other router to be the active, or we can set both. So I really should say three ways to do it. You don't need to do all three. You only need to really pick one of them. In other words, you only need to set one side as the active. So you could go in and you can say, I want you to be the active, right? You could do that. You could go in over here and let me pick a different color. You could say, I want you to be the passive. You could go in and you could do that. Or you could do both. Now, I'm going to submit to you that I like doing both. I like performing both steps and saying active, passive on both sides. So that's what we're going to do. And I'll show you how to do both commands at the same time anyway, right? Do show run section router BGP. Here's our current configuration. What I'm going to do, I'm already in my BGP config here because I'm in my config router. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take neighbor 3.3.3. And hit the question mark. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. We have this transport option. Whoops, sorry about that. We have this transport option. So I'm going to steal that. 
Now, if I hit the question mark again, I have a few options, but the ones that I'm looking for, or the one that I'm looking for, is this connection mode. Now, this connection mode is going to give me yet two more options, and it's going to give me an active and a passive, and the description here tells me, I mean, Cisco is great. It says actively establish the TCP session or passively establish the TCP session. So, interpretation, wait for TCP, wait for somebody to establish a TCP session with you, or actively try to establish the TCP session with whoever you're supposed to form it with. So we're going to go in and we're going to say active here. Do show run section router BGP. So here now I'm telling R1 that for this particular neighbor, I always want you to try and establish the active session. So I want you to be the active. Now what's going to happen here is that if I go ahead and I clear this on R3, notice how, uh, where did I clear it? I cleared it up here, right? And within a second, it came up and said, hey, I have a new adjacency. But watch when I do it now. Nothing really happens. In other words, it clears the session, but I don't get a session right away like I did before. Here, right away, I got a session, but I don't this time. And the reason why I don't is because we've told R1 that he is to be the active all of the time. So when R3 attempts to be the active, it doesn't fly. And R1 refuses that session because R1 is going to be the one that forms the session. So now if I go in and I say show TCP brief uh, all, you can see that R3, here's my established session, you can see that R3 was the 179 and R1 was the higher random. Show IP BGP neighbors, uh, include host, is going to give us the same exact information. Now, the thing is, is the reason why I do both, the reason why I go in and I tell this guy you're the active and I tell this guy you're the passive, you could do one or the other, but the reason why I do both is because I don't want this to happen. I don't want R3 to attempt to rebuild that session and attempt to reestablish the session. I, I don't want that traffic, right? So even though I've gone in and I've told R1 that he's the active, I'm still going to go in and let R1 know that, hey, buddy, don't even try to establish that TCP session. Wait for it to be established with you because you're going to be the passive. So we'll go in we'll say router BGP 13. And uh, really didn't save myself time, but that's okay. I can still copy paste. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say transport and then this connection mode. And again, my two options here for active passive. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use the passive. Do you show run section router BGP? And I've gone ahead and I've set one side to be the passive TCP speaker. And I've gone in and set the other side to be the active. So this is how I can have some more manual control with regards to who forms the active side and the passive side of my TCP session when it comes to BGP.